Welcome to another episode of Catalyzing Radical Systemic Change. When I thought about preparing the podcast, I'm not exactly doing the usual intro, I asked myself, what possibly could Alistair imagine than more of a radical intervention than him sitting himself in pitch black darkness and silence alone? So today's topic is the wisdom of darkness. And I feel very grateful to speak with uh, Severin Geza, the founder of the Hermitage at Lake Atitlan in Guatemala, who has offered darkness retreats to literally hundreds of people all around the planet. And whereas this practice was since times unknown, very exclusive only for hermits and monks, this practice actually has become, I mean, it's still a niche, but it's, it's become uh, way more popular and there are more and more people due to documentaries and other things that are get it, uh, getting excited in also having this experience. So in this podcast, we will talk about a couple of misconceptions, talk about best practices, obviously also our own experiences as well as give you a background on the traditions within which uh, darkness retreats uh, play a role. So having said all of that, Severin, it's my great pleasure to be with you in that virtual room together. And my first question for today, and I think it's really just interesting for the listeners, what got you excited in darkness retreats? What, what made you discover this very special practice? Hi, Alistair. Thank you for having me on your podcast. Yeah, the dark retreat is not something that I discovered, like of what I, in which way I'm offering it right now at the Hermitage. And that happened when I was in 2010, I was a monk in a monastery in Thailand. And because I'm I, originally from Europe, they brought us to this special site where the founder of the monastery actually got his enlightenment and so they brought us to a cave underground and when i went into the cave there it was a very interesting experience because it was in complete darkness and we were just there for about half an hour and everybody went outside again but something just yeah was hitting me directly and i stayed there for the next two or three days and i came out for toilet or for food but i i went back because something was really touching me on a deep level that I couldn't even put in words. And so that's how I, on the first yeah, time in my life, connected with complete darkness. And later on, when I actually came to Hirdaya, which is a school, like a yoga meditation school in Mexico, and now also in France, one of my teachers, um, Sahajananda, was sharing more about his dark retreat experiences. And that's where I then became more familiar with the practice and more the background of darkness and how it has been an ancient practice that has been used all over the world. And my fascination has been growing from there ever since. Yeah, to riff off that, when because I think this conversation is special in the sense that we will talk into like different buckets of content at the same time mix it with our own experience so now that you mentioned the different spiritual traditions can you give the listener or those who view it on youtube um, just an overview of the different traditions that tie into darkness retreats yeah as i just said like the dark retreat is an ancient practice and it's still alive nowadays in the Dzogchen tradition so in the Buddhist tradition and you also find in the Mahayana tradition and maybe another tradition that you have maybe heard of is the Kogi Mamos and it's an indigenous tribe that's living in the north of Colombia and these are probably the ones that are most common in the Taoist tradition nowadays Mantak Chia is probably the most well-known representative for darkness that's being held in the north of Chiang Mai and in general darkness uh, has its roots even on a deeper level but nowadays it's very secretive or it's like you kind of have to already have a background to go even into the darkness and so if you would look like from a different perspective then you can also say the druids like where 
the Christianity is actually stemming from have a background in darkness. And then also if you go into the, the Greek tradition, um, then you can also see they have a background of what they call hibernation, um, like where you go into complete stillness, like in darkness. And also, also in the Egyptian tradition, like that's not yet proven in any way but actually it's said that the, the pyramids are like a labyrinth and only if you develop your inner light you find your way out and therefore it's actually a huge dark retreat and also there are some signs that the activation or like when you activate the pineal gland which we maybe can come back to a little bit later to speak more about that but there is a, a substance or like a secretion that's coming out of that that has been found in the in the, the the pyramids and then yeah in the native american traditions like they also have been burying p people alive on the ground so you see like that's just a few to mention and and there is even more than that so it, it has been very alive around the world I have the feeling for our listener and also for me personally, it, it, it would be the, the, the most uh, intuitive to now share um, our own experience. So maybe to start off with you, since you're, since you're accompanying uh, hundreds of people in the last 10 years uh, into darkness retreat, what's, what's, what's your own experience? How often did you do it? And because I have the feeling when we start with our own experiences, then it's also easier to riff off like into the common misconceptions and the best practices we want to share. Yeah, I mean, I have discovered the darkness like around 10 or like, yeah, over 12 years ago now. And I have built a dark retreat at the Hermitage. And now we have two and they're booked continuously. And so I always have a dark retreat available when I want to go or if somebody's canceling or just booking one myself. So I'm normally like two to three times in the dark per year. And yeah, my personal experience like for myself is still an ongoing journey. Like in the beginning, I was much more thinking that like you go in and you go for a very long time and you go deep. And I see more now with time, like the dark retreat I actually has become for me a personal practice. So it's like an ongoing journey and also seeing how every dark retreat is very different. And it's something that you cannot imagine what it means. So when you have never actually gone into a place like where you hermetically locked and you have no source of light coming in and you really like there's no difference between having your eyes open or closed, that, that sense of darkness is something we have never experienced. And so going into the dark retreat for a lot of people is actually in the first place very scary. And especially when I'm traveling, then I share with people what I'm doing and they're like, what are you doing? And I'm telling them, oh, yeah, I'm, I'm holding space for people who want to go into a dark retreat. And they're like, oh, yeah, but you mean you're locked? And it's like, no, you're not locked. You can come out whenever you want. And it immediately creates this fear or this question of like, can you go crazy? And then it's also like, all right, where are you at in your journey and like so many times like maybe even with the silent retreat like i know that people feel like repelled or feel like oh that's nothing that they would ever do or why would you do that that's crazy and then like let's say five or ten years down the road people nowadays or like just a little bit later they feel actually that it has a lot of benefit for them where they once have been very close or even you know rejecting an idea like that Later on, they suddenly see that it actually has something to offer to them. And I feel that's something as well with the dark retreat. It's nothing that I'm trying to push or to force onto people or to promote even. It's like when you feel that that's something you want or need to experience and that you're ripe, and then you're finding us rather than we're finding you. So the dark retreat is for whomever who wants to go inside and then it's more about when you're reaching out with us like how long are you ready to go inside and we're deciding that together so it's much more for me to check on you what what are you ripe to to confront yourself with and and are you willing actually to to face whatever is coming up and and then we're going more personally into what that might entail and i mean also being curious about your background where you're coming from so that's just a little bit of giving you an idea of how it looks like yeah i think now it's a it's a good point to to really talk about the common misconceptions so you already mentioned not necessarily longer is better. I myself went in for five nights, but nevertheless, there seems to be 
the right amount. So you also don't advise a darkness retreat only for two hours. Usually it's a couple of days. So maybe you can explain that why there is sort of a minimum viable duration to, to, to get like the whole benefits and also the neurobiological correlates that go with it, but not necessarily why people have to stay very extended periods. Mm. Yeah, let's speak about it from a perspective where you go in for a short amount of time. And I think for a lot of people, like even already when I speak about a day or going in for five days, that that's like, that's not a short amount of time. I thought we're speaking about a few hours. And I have a lot of time when people come through then or like they just already at the retreat at the hermitage because we not uniquely offer dark retreats like also people staying at the hermitage for their normal retreats where you are just in the nature or where you come for group retreats i'm giving people the possibility to come inside the dark with me because it's just very potent to experience like a safe container or a womb as i call it because you can imagine like there's nothing scary in a dark retreat. The concept that's scary is actually more the mind of facing the unknown or what might come up. And then the idea of not knowing is like, oh my God, in that not knowing, everything can occur. And then your own imagination brings you actually to a scary place rather than just going in and seeing how it actually feels. And that's actually the whole process already, which I'm mentioning here, we're coming from thinking into feeling. And that's a huge shift of actually coming from the conceptual idea, or even maybe a memory or projection into the future, to really into connection with our body, and what's actually alive. And in that sense, it's very beautiful, because we actually just connecting back to an old memory when we were in the womb of our mothers, where we were in symbiosis with something that was holding us. And we didn't need to know we didn't need to hold anything in or to control. And when we are in a safe container in that sense, which a dark retreat is, then any undigested emotions or feelings that we haven't been looking at, maybe, you know, like just grieving about somebody that we have lost, or the ending of a relationship, or maybe the, you know, the, the shift simply in like where we are changing in a new direction in our lives, or where we simply feeling that there is something that we need to express and, and be truthful for. These are all parts of our rich inner dynamics that are coming up in and in the dark retreat, there is nothing that you can distract yourself. So there's nothing to look forward to or plan it's much more like you're going actually into your subconscious and you're making the unconscious conscious and that's a concept that more and more people becoming aware because normally we are being ruled by our subconscious and it directs our lives and the dark retreat is a very potent place to actually go into that domain that we don't even really are aware of but actually dictates so much of our lives and so it's almost preventing actually outcomes that we don't even want because we are in a reaction so through normally through actually being in pain or, or like deep suffering or having caused harm to to people we love most maybe our families or our children or romantic partners like we are realizing that there is something that we need to change within ourselves and the dark is simply a place that i have from my own pain I needed something that's very efficient. I have realized that that's really going to the root of what's alive in us and, and actually making peace with ourselves and really finding love, forgiveness and, and, and compassion within uh, our own darkest places. And if we can find it there, then we can also bring it out into the light and into our everyday life. And that's what then makes the dark retreat so potent. And it's not about hiding, but really about bringing it into our daily life. Now, since you, you've uh, accompanied uh, a solid amount of people, like hundreds, um, another misconception often is that people think that like visions and deep transformation is guaranteed. So when you see people yeah. that, that go into the darkness, is it also that some people just come out of it and was just like difficult, but they didn't have a breakthrough? How do I imagine that? I mean, I can talk about my own experience later, but really just curious to stay with these misconceptions, misconceptions yeah. people have. 
Yeah, I mean, the misconceptions also come because we have not been like we, we're trying to approach everything in a in a mental approach. It's like, how do I do it right? Or what do I get out of? Or what's the right time for me rather than actually coming to a place where it's like just feeling into it, like, what do I need? And that also comes along with like all the preparation or what you read about the dark retreat these days, where there's a lot of parts that actually, yeah, maybe that it was your experience. But my personal experience, if I'm going in the dark, will look very different. And even I can say that for myself, like from my last dark retreat like to my next one, like it's really about letting go of any expectations. And that can be very challenging because that means really like to open up to whatever is alive. And that might be very surprising. And so what you actually bring up is like, it's this, we are nowadays... Um, there's a lot of people who have a spiritual practice and what I mean by that we're creating or we cultivating awareness and that means like we have a practice like breath work or maybe like dancing or it can even be cooking like whatever brings you passion and joy and what brings you in a flow state that is cultivating awareness but normally it also means like you're doing that when you're not feeling in a good space because it's your anchor point and you're repeating that because you are just becoming so familiar with it that it brings you in a flow state because you're doing it repetitively. So it's not something that you'd only do on when you're feeling good and feeling happy, but something that you're repetitively being doing. So it can be anything, actually. But a lot of time, in order to come to that flow state nowadays, we're using substances. And substances, like especially in the psychedelic world, when we're using maybe even microdosing or we're using like an ayahuasca ceremony, that's what I have seen a lot of people that come to our retreat center and you have an idea of how that journey was for you and how deeply you can connect with a deeper part within yourself and how sensitive you are. But now if you're going in the dark retreat and you're expecting now that there is some, let's say, an activation of your pineal gland or a DMT experience or even like the melatonin like will bring you to a place, and then you're waiting basically until something is happening to you. And if you're waiting for that, then yes, it's like what you said, Alistair, like a person comes out and is like bored. It's like, yeah, that was not what I expected. And then I can only say like, yeah, okay, well, I'm glad you got exactly what you needed. You had to learn to actually deal with your expectations. And that's just where you're at. And if you actually would have, let's say, maybe a meditation practice, because meditation then is not about getting rid of thoughts and being silent and just all in love. It's much more about accept, accepting, actually, the state of your emotions and feelings and sensations that's right now there. And you're becoming aware of what that is. And you're not trying to change that. And because you're not trying to change them, they they actually subduing. So they actually become much more calm as a result of your non-reactivity. And then if you would go in from that background, your experience might be a much more profound or different one but not because you're trying just because you can relax into it so the dark retreat is really a place to just simply be with yourself and as simple as that sounds as you know by yourself no it's the most difficult thing like maybe you can share for yourself like how challenging was that for you to just simply be and rest with yourself because you're also a very productive and energetic person yeah sure i can share um quite something about my own experience which actually uh, ties into the question then back to you are dark retreats uh, for everyone so i think this will take a couple of minutes um so my sketch on darkness retreat is i started to meditate very young in my life at 17 i will turn 44 soon so it's more than a quarter of a century and to be very honest, as a child, I had panic attacks and nightmares, and I was terribly afraid of darkness. So when mm -hmm. I read for the first time about darkness retreats in my early 20s, actually, when I went to India and to monasteries and did Vipassana and stuff like that, just the sheer thought, just the sheer imagination of going into darkness was like the opposite of anything um, I wanted. And actually, I think... It, that only changed when I met you like a year ago, right? When, when I was working from Lake Atitlan and then actually saw it as a beautiful pinnacle or culmination of a series of interventions where, as you know, but 
some of the listeners might also know it after a long meditative practice, I did a hell lot of therapy, body work, family constellation work, classical therapy, gestalt therapy and whatnot. And I also did a solid amount of psychedelics, which again, you can find in other podcasts, including like many, many, many uh, dozens of times ayahuasca. So I think for me, going into darkness actually up until very briefly before was accompanied not by being afraid of it, but actually just having a solid amount of respect because of the intervention. And when now people, some, some of my closest friends, you know, ask me, would you recommend me to go into darkness, certainly for some people that I know for many years, I said, yeah, sure, give it a shot. And for some people, I also say, maybe not. Maybe that's, that's a dash too, too intense for you. And just to answer to your question, and then I think when we talk about neurobiological correlates later in the podcast, I can share more about like the experience dimension of it. For me, overall, the darkness retreat has been very gentle, very smooth. I would describe it much like you said, the experience of being in the womb, like the mother's womb before you yeah, are given birth onto this planet. It was a very feminine, embracing and gentle uh, experience uh, for me, but that might be uh, completely different for other people. So maybe a part of your answer could be, since I know there are people applying to go into the darkness retreat that you don't accept, maybe you give a couple of disclaimers, cliffhangers for whom you usually do not recommend to go into the darkness retreat. Yeah. So first of all, like what you asked, is the dark retreat for everybody? <laughs> like, no, clearly not. Like the dark retreat is an advanced practice. And therefore, it's not for the masses. And right now, we're seeing that there is more and more media coverage, or like we also have a lot of yeah exposure that the, the hermitage in particular is getting because there's not so many dark retreat centers around the world that it's also something that you don't just do. You need to feel actually safe, right? That's really the 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 core of why you would sign up to such a practice yourself because you are going basically inside a, a hermetically locked room and you know that from the outside yes you're being held but now you are being with yourself and yes you have a preparation with us and you have an integration afterwards which is actually what i'm more and more focusing on but really it's about the journey where you are with yourself so for whom is it not like especially when we're speaking about that right now that what comes to mind is the basically the last two years like where we have going through the time of corona there is even a term for corona depression like it really has brought up a lot for all of us like me included where we have been really put into like a a, a, a phenomena on the world that we have been going into I, I call it actually retreat it's not even isolation it's like we all have been forced to to be more with ourselves and also like with masks on, a lot of fears have been pushed. And in that for for that, for that reason, like we had to deal actually with our own fear. And not just that, but also with our emotions like anger or or like sadness. Like we there's a lot of loss that we have experienced. And we actually have been realizing that we are normally trying to solve. A lot of things in our mind and we are going through a time where everything is changing everything is falling apart and therefore control as a response is not working very well because while things are falling apart the new is not created yet and that needs to be dealt with from a place of acceptance and actually of feeling and allowing that loss as well and that can be very challenging when we are in the surrounding where that's happening so directly to us, but we are actually not having the space or even the emotional and mental support. And even like 
this yeah the, the being seen in that and just being allowed to go into difficult times and so when we are then having maybe too much coming up on an emotional and mental level and we're dealing with that on um, on let's let's say we are using um how do you call, like pharmaceutical substances you know to calm down or like sleeping pills or like just to like to try to like how do we deal with depression like depression is really something that's actually just telling us like the way we're living is not it, it doesn't fulfill our hearts it's actually a dying of our hearts where something is not feeling healthy anymore we don't feel alive anymore and so therefore we're not we are not in our truth. And when we're coming from like an extreme pain like that, and we're just looking for a dark retreat as an immediate solution, that's when I'm telling people, sorry, you have to do something else. Like this is not like your miracle pill and we'll solve it in one go. It's it's some, it's some a place where you're starting to connect more with yourself. And that inner connection is what you're cultivating in any awareness practice. And that's why it's actually important to already have that in the first place. And so coming into the dark retreat is like a continuation or how I like to call it. It's a practice in itself. And that's also where we then talk more about, for example, shadow work, where we speak about how to deal with our so-called negative emotions. And like, what are do we what do we repress? Like, what do we have? Be, what have we been told in our childhood that we don't, like what we are not allowed from our parents to feel within ourselves and that's when then the, the inner child like is also becoming an important like reference point where it's like how do we deal with ourselves when we are falling apart like how how harsh are we with ourselves and that's something that we normally have to learn not just in a dark retreat for the first time but there's many other tools and support systems that we can learn first and also i think plan medicine like what you were sharing before like ayahuasca you know all these are important journeys along the way to actually become more and more intimate and sensitive with ourselves so yeah a dark retreat in itself like i really feel it's something that it calls you when you're ready and and i think if the more we are able to listen and then we can listen to that call and yeah some people are not able to listen to that and you're trying to just make it another trip on your bucket list and i'm here to say well then you're not ready because you're trying rather than you're feeling called for it because it's calling you then let's go back to the magical pill because i admit i've taken quite some magical pills and magical potions and i don't have a problem voicing that <laughs> Mommy, daddy, grand, grandparents, business partners all know that. So you often say a darkness retreat is not a trip. And I would say, I would say it's true and not, because I would say, <laughs> yes, it's not a trip, you know, like a tab of acid or mushrooms or something like that. But it can evolve for some of us into a trip, which then also needs some experience. So I have the feeling I actually wanted to do that later in the podcast and to disentangle it from the psychedelic experience, but maybe to give just the uh, listeners um, uh, um, a point of reference is I'm actually very grateful that I personally, as Alistair, had a good amount of psychedelic experience, including meditative practice and silent retreats and long-term solo retreats, to enjoy or just experience the, I would coin it psychedelic or otherworldly or special parts of the darkness retreat. So I just wonder, why do you say a darkness retreat is not a trip? What makes it different than a psychedelic experience? But what are also similarities? Well, I would say you have more experience than I have in psychedelic experiences. I have definitely tried a lot of it, uh, but not to the depth that you have. And why I'm saying that dark retreat is not a trip is simply because, in my experience, when you take a, um, any substance, actually, for me, the, the shift from my ordinary, like my normal human experience of like where I can still process, I still feel like I'm in control, it's where then the psychedelic experience is coming in and it shifts my perspective. There's still a sense of me perceiving everything, but then suddenly, especially with ayahuasca, like I'm almost pushed through, let's say what 
what I haven't been digesting. Let's say it can be a lot of anger. It can be a lot of fear. It can be paranoia. It can be an intense amount of grief and sadness. And it's coming to the surface. It's almost like, what is my body holding on? Like what is still in my system that I'm wearing kind of, and, 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 and it's actually burdening me. Or it can also be a lot of joy. Like these are the four core emotions. Then there is more, but these are definitely some of the four pillars. And when you are moving through them, through ayahuasca in particular, and then you are letting that, like it's almost like an emotional release. And when you have released that emotion, what comes as an outcome is like what we call a non-dual experience or where the mind is not judging anymore and it's pro or contra. It's like not in between. There is just a deep sense of union. And it's almost like as, as if you feel as if you're one with everything. There's a deep sense of not thinking anymore or judging or making an interpretation. You just are. And that means you're very much in the present moment and you're connected with yourself so deeply. And out of a result with that deep immersion or union, like you're feeling connected with everything else. And it's like it's like telepathy. Like you just, you are, and therefore there's nothing that you need to do anymore. And it's like this beautiful exchange that you then have with yourself but also with the people around you and it's very much covered in simplicity now i'm sharing that because i'm saying like the dark is different like you actually go into that state as well where you would go let's say with the plant medicine but you're building up much much slower because there's nothing that you intake there's no substance that you take and the melatonin in itself that you create in your pineal gland so the pineal gland is actually uh, a topic in itself that we could talk about, which is basically it's it's living in your third eye. And that's also why we're speaking about this inner light is not a light that you see like any kind of light, like a torch. It's much more the inner light of awareness. And that's coming from the pineal gland. And the pineal gland is actually the excretion is like a melatonin for the first which just makes you very, very relaxed. And that's what you're creating when you're sleeping. So as you know, in the dark retreat, you're not opening your eyes and having a break. Like no matter how long you stay, it's like there's an un a continuation of melatonin. And in the beginning, when we are sleepy or like relaxed, then we, we sleep more, especially in the first two days. Like you come to a place where you just, you rest until your body is just charged like a battery and then you're full. And then you still relax, but you're not tired anymore. And in that, like you have basically the, the happy hormone, like serotonin kicks in. And that's when you kind of continue, like from a place where you start to realize from that happiness or from that love as well, like you can embrace much more than what you would be able normally or like what normally would trigger you. Suddenly you can actually allow to feel and to maybe also look at it from a different perspective. And because everything is so slow, you actually can really go in these nuanced emotions and sensations. And from there, you even like coming to a place where, let's say, you know, like there's five topics that people have in their heads. Let's say like, you know, what's the future going to bring? Or like sexuality, going through all your romantic partners, how you made love, or like what's your connection that you have right now and how you want to, make that further into a beautiful relationship or holidays financial security like and so what like there's kind of this these main themes that we all have that we go through and the longer you stay in the dark like there's a repetition happening where you start to realize maybe after day four or five yeah i've been thinking about that already like it's it's the same story again and you're becoming actually slowly tired of that and out of that comes a familiarity with your own mind, comes a familiarity with who you are and how you function and also kind of a boredom with yourself. It's like, yeah, here we go again, because that's very much in the realm of self-improvement. And then the next step is really coming to like, all right, like when there is actually more acceptance with everything that you are, you know, with your activity, with your pain, with your sorrow, there comes a deep sense of ease a deep sense of peace and a deep sense of quietness and yes that can be included in that when you come to that that normally comes like you can call it visions like lights or flickering or like even like some energies moving up your body and even that you could call it it's, it's a visual sensation as as the mind that in the beginning you be very fascinated and then more and more you can actually connect 
with what I call like the very essence of your being or like your core or just this sense of me, no matter what's as a stimulus happening. And in the dark retreat, you just become so much more sensitive. And now imagine like what you said just before when you you have like a psychedelic experience. But the beauty is like you don't need a substance because you can actually you're realizing that has all along it's like who you are and it has been always alive in you you just we all are very active and we we are like we have been numbing ourselves and for good reasons we need to protect ourselves so when we denumbing what's coming up as well it's not just the, the the beauty with it we also when we denumbing we are realizing actually how vulnerable we have been and maybe some of the pain or hurt that we have been experiencing in our childhood and then we can actually hold ourselves there again. And what that brings out is like a, an aliveness and a gratitude for being alive when we come out of the dark retreat, what you call it like being reborn and then the integration or staying with that rather than just running back in where we came from before is really important. And it's part of the dark retreat itself and what I call yeah, as an integration is one of the most important parts that to actually take it into our everyday life. I feel before we talk about the integration part, since so far we, we have shared little of the experience and I feel it's, it's best from my side to riff off uh, the neurobiological um, correlates. So yes, I'm active to the point of still being pretty hyperactive you know I was a very active child and running around and did not want to sit still even for 45 minutes up until the end of school you know I got crazy sometimes I just went into whatever pretending I need to go pee and then just doing a couple of sit-ups you know or something like that just because sitting for 45 minutes got me crazy so for whatever reason maybe because I was old and going into darkness I was really enjoying that melatonin period right um, and I, I know you have shared that a lot of people enjoy that. So the first two days, you're really just sinking in, you're slowing down, you're sleeping. I did not fast. Um, mm. so, so I had like two meals a day. And then the serotonin, I found extremely pleasant. Also, when you compare it to substance intake, really just this very pleasant feeling of being at ease and peace and the body is relaxed and every muscle is relaxed and you just do your practice and I was actually positively surprised by I would still call it a psychedelic experience or something similar to a psychedelic experience with this all these emanations of light be them above me like a white source of light just constantly trickling into my nervous system or sitting on a big source of light or then the light coming through my whole body and nervous system and even whilst being aware of that and being trained obviously in in meditation I did not overly identify myself with it sure time and again I was also just asking into the witness consciousness you know from a classical non-dual uh, tradition just asking myself, okay, Alistair, you're in a darkness retreat. You're aware that you are aware. So who is experiencing these beautiful light experiences? But nevertheless, I must admit, they were just extremely pleasant and joyful and compared, there I completely agree with you, different than substance intake. It all felt very natural, right? Because your own body is releasing whatever, um, I wonder if, because I consciously educated myself a bit on darkness retreats, but not too much. So I consciously did not watch like 10 documentaries. I watched the one from Aubrey Marcus. So I must admit mine has been just beautiful and pleasant and less tricky than Aubrey Marcus uh, documentary. Um, but I nevertheless had the feeling like, being aware of the neurobiological correlates, again, of melatonin, the sleep hormone, then serotonin, you feel happy, then DMT, which usually gets released when you take like ayahuasca. I mean, it was kind of a multi-day, mild, beautiful ayahuasca experience, and nevertheless, pretty intense. So, so, so again, you know, it's a, it's an, it's an odd conundrum to describe it as a non-psychedelic experience because your own body produces it. But at the same time, even, even 
let's say the fractal nature of how this milk white very nice light you know appears and shimmers and shines and morphs and whatever you know drips um it it was i i could come describe it with a somewhat mild ayahuasca experience so i wonder what you have to say uh, on that before we move into the integration part sure i mean you see like i'm doing that since now over 10 years and for me it's i also feel my my pers like my standpoint is like i'm here to demystify the dark retreat because a lot of time what i see is like it's this extreme stories that's being told and for example just to give you an example right now i just have a person in the dark retreat right now he's in for 30 days that's a very long time and yeah he has an extensive background and he just flew all the way from canada where he lives in the wilderness and he was serving in the army he was part of the vietnam war and he just has experienced that he was in the dark retreat and he like we in guatemala we have some explosions that happening like it's part of the culture that they have kind of it's not even fireworks it's really just explosions that go up in the air to celebrate like a wedding or somebody on a funeral or just to celebrate a saint it's kind of for all reasons and for him these noises they triggered an old memory in him and it brought him back in a surrounding where it was very real for him that the story of what happened to him when he was younger that's still stored in his body was like being in the war came up and he also like with that emotion like he had like the digestive issue were not working very well so his like his his belly was really painful and it's a beautiful example of like yes like we can emphasize the lights we can emphasize the the kundalini rising we can emphasize that we are having a psychedelic experience and when we are having that and i agree it is a psychedelic experience it's just for me it's not psychedelics like it's in our nature that we are more than like we are a spiritual being like in a human body and for me like i work a lot with breath like you have everything within you that you need and for me all the spiritual or like the, the psychedelics experiences they're a, a great way to push buttons that already exist within us so it's like you take a substance that activates something inside of you and i see i have i mean i have many friends that have retreat centers and are much more experienced in intake of substances and you come to a point normally if that's what i see where you feel like okay i have activated that or opened that and i'm more familiar with that substance and now i don't feel i need to take it anymore or people even microdose to come off it because they're becoming more and more sensitive and they do the adjustments in their life and then their life changes as an experience they had and then that's for me then the what's so beautiful and in the dark retreat yes it is very profound it has this sensations as you mentioned yourself alistair and they're really important as well to, you cannot already say you know it's also like that's why it's so important to to speak about that like when you are angry you're angry you cannot pretend that you are like happy or when you have a lot of lights and you're fascinated by them you cannot just say well i already know you know severin alistair told me that it's not about the lights like let's go be beyond that it's like no like and it's the same way when like the man has like this experience of like the the vietnam war and he's being triggered and in deep fear response like yes he's then talking with us on the outside and i'm speaking him true of like this is a physical reaction that you're having it's actually all fine on the outside and he didn't trust us in the beginning you know it's like no this is so real it's like yes it's real in your body because it's finally you're safe enough that this unprocessed emotion and you can call it trauma if you want that's a very strong name but it's basically an emotion that has not been digested now can come up and be released in a safe setting where you cannot direct in somebody else but you have to feel it and that's very real for all of us you know like the war is an extreme example but it can just simply be that you haven't been held enough you know getting enough attention from your father or your mother you know you were breastfed by your mother or your father was working and therefore you have a need that you need to re-experience right now and that's what's happening when we have these big releases or deep psychedelic experience it comes together 
with the the pain and the more we can actually go into the pain or let's say we can embrace it with love then more joy comes out of that and that's really what i want to make a stand for and not just highlight this peak experiences which are just part of a much bigger journey that we're going through and i have done that many times so i can language that and i think when i'm saying that now it's nothing new what i'm telling you right yeah before we move into the integration part um again um because exceptions confirm the rule just as an odd question somewhat have you ever allowed into the darkness retreat or gotten a request from somebody who never did any sort of retreat or any sort of spiritual exercise and they were just like curious stable adventurous really just interested in that because i have the feeling development is so asynchronous so i also don't want to in disincentivize people it's not that everybody needs to meditate for 20 years and have all these psychedelic experiences so is there a typology of people for whom the darkness retreat may be somewhat as an initiatory process for a longer uh, personal development journey might be the right thing that's a great question so we have an intake form that we are sending out to people that like we, we normally offer like three, five and seven days. And then from there on, you have to custom tailor your own experience that we then get in touch with you and see, you know, where you're at. But in general, like we have an, an intake form where you have to share your background, you know, also your mental illnesses, taking any substances, like where you are at currently. And just already in that, like I get an, an idea and I'm reading that through personally while I have a receptionist that answers and and in response to all the practical details. And over the years that we're doing that now, the dark retreat just has so much more, like people start to understand like, oh, you're the guy that does dark retreats or I've heard of that. And it's just becoming more something that people have heard of or actually are interested in. And, and people are really called to it. Like we have so much interest, like we normally booked like four months in ahead. And People come to us that have a background, but we have more and more people over the last years that just don't have a background in any spiritual practice. And that is something that I just see also the need of our time that people want to go in because I also feel like for myself, I would actually even say some people just know they need a safe place where they cannot be distracted. Let's say like I have a lot of people who come in the dark and say, wow, it's the first time that I actually have experienced a real meditation. You know, before I was always trying and it was really distracting and it was nice, but I was, you know, I was, but now that I've been in the dark, wow, it's just people come out crying. And yes, I have been leading people in just for half an hour or an hour where we go together or even as a group that have no background or let's say the partner even like I have a couple you know like the man or the woman wants to go in and they prepare and they reach out and the partner's like yeah you do that honey but you know that's not my thing and then they come sometimes even together and then they become interested of like now that I'm here now that it's closed and available to me I'm curious let me just see inside. And I like that, you know, some of us have much more this inquiry of like, let's plan. I'm, I know I feel a calling and want to do it, especially men like, wow, that's challenging. That's amazing. I want to do it. And then it can be a very different approach of like, I just feel intuitively called and now it's available. I just want to feel how it might be when I'm sitting inside. And so, yes, I have a lot of people that just want to sit and in the company of somebody of just being there inside to actually realize wow this is exactly my thing because it's going really away from any spiritual concept you know once you're in the dark i don't care if you're vegan or if you're a meditator or if you're buddhist or whatever you are whatever the ism is like you have can you are you able to sit with yourself you know where do you have you know where are you angry or you know, you're projecting or you are suppressing parts within yourself that you normally can push on other people or on the government or politics, you know, who cares? Can you be with yourself? And I feel even to your question, you know, for a lot of times, people with absolutely no background, you have no expectations, you can go in there. And it's so potent. But then the big question is, 
how do you bring that into your daily life when you come out if you have absolutely no experience previously so yes you have much much more likely a peak experience than inside but then you don't know how to deal with that it's almost like something happened to you and you don't know you have no comparison so it was like a dream and you come out and that was amazing but you don't know what happened and it just as fast and deep as it was as quickly it dissolves again when you come out so it's it's both you see like that's that would be my answer to that that's why integration is important so let's let's give the people again a couple of best practice or recommendations when you look back at a couple of hundred people you have accompanied and that had this like deep experience what are the most important points that you usually recommend for integration so that like you mentioned this deep intervention may be one of the most beautiful profound maybe also maybe one of the most challenging experiences of your life uh, and most confronting maybe that's also the most healing uh, so that yeah. this experience doesn't dissolve that quickly what's the most important thing what, that people should take as a takeaway yeah that's there's no like co cookie cutter recipe that i can deliver because it's really about your own individual journey and my question would be much more like yeah what do you have in your repertoire already that helps you to bring bring you back to presence and then it's not just about that but especially like when when i see people coming out of the hermitage where we have let's say a surrounding where you have very healthy food you know that's one thing that's i think it's very important like fresh and healthy food that is cooked with love and then also being in nature just already slowing down and being in touch with nature is one of the ingredients that really helps us to to get in touch with ourselves to actually start to listen again what's alive with it within us and that's what people actually get out of our place it's not just a dark retreat but actually to realize wow now i i can actually start to connect with myself again and then what would i do if i would have time And then from that comes actually a connection with ourselves and starting to listen to your own intuition. What do you need? And then from that place is actually even, I would say, a surrounding of friends and a community that is not talking to you, which we have so many times. It's like you're telling your experience and then they want to be of help or they want to be your friend and telling you, oh, you should do this or oh, you should do that or that would be good. It's like, okay, I hear you. And I listen to your experience and thank you for sharing. And that's it. Like you are a sovereign being and I trust that you have the solution and what works for you may be not working for me. And I'm listening to you and I'm allowing you to figure it out. I'm part of your experience and I'm, 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 I'm holding your hand when you're crying, but I'm not here to, to you know, to, to buy into your stories that hold you back. Like I'm here for you to hold your hand and allow the emotion And you can also come out of that and tell me what you need. And so even coming out of the dark retreat, becoming more in touch with ourselves, which is not just the experience of the dark retreat. It's actually a practice that just has been intensified there inside. It's like, all right, how, how do we actually become back to this inner connection and where we then actually step into responsibility and the sense of like, well, What do I need and what do I want from out of this psychedelic experience, which we call life? And what is life actually asking me to, to, to learn and, and grow from? And therefore, pain is actually there to, to help me to learn what, what is not pleasant. And therefore, it needs my like reaction. It needs my intervention in, in order to change something. And so am I here to create Or I'm here just as a receiver and therefore maybe I need a little bit more pain to wake up. And the dark retreat can just emphasize these learning processes even more and see that we are here to really live life to the fullest if we want that. <laughs> and yes, to do your question with tools, like I mean, there is a lot like like breath work in, in my eyes is definitely a big tool but i would even say dancing you know moving shaking like exercises that, that bring like everything that brings us into our bodies that connect us more with emotions and feelings and and earth us again because then when we have a strong container we can really then also 
go beyond and really leave the body behind. So that's a little bit about that. Nobody ever went crazy from the hundreds of people. Nobody. <laughs> yes, I would say. Yes, I mean that's that's such a common question. Like, are we not? Are you not having clients that go crazy? But I would say, well, if everybody would actually speak out loud what we normally have as thoughts in our mind, then I would say, well, it's actually everybody is already crazy. It's not that you go crazy. Like everybody is already nuts, and it's not about going crazy. It's about realizing that you have somebody like talking so much to you so you're actually not even in silence you're just actually becoming aware of the inner noise and that's really challenging and that's also why it's so hard to be with yourself like i remember my first dark retreat like i was so exhausted like so exhausted to be with myself and it was like just going on i was so happy to go to sleep and i was so like annoyed of waking up again it's like here we go again the blah 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 just continues and the there was so much exhaustion, like it was so much energy just by the mental noise. By day six, like there was just an explosion happening in my mind of just like I couldn't deal with it anymore. And I don't know what happened, but it was just this tiredness. And then day six, suddenly there was this explosion and this huge, it was almost like, you know, it was not complete quiet, but compared to the noise of internal thoughts and stories, there was so much silence suddenly. And it was like this big pipe of water was suddenly closed and there was so much silence and quietness and I was so happy and so much peace came from them only to realize there are even smaller pipes, you know, with water, like as an image, like there's still noise inside there, but the shift was tremendous. Towards the later bits of our podcast, I jotted down a question which says, who will help me when things get difficult? And I want to frame it from my own experience because I really think that helps the listeners. So I, I had really heavy nightmares and panic attacks uh, for a very long time in my life. And I'm happy that they went away. But also, especially in ayahuasca, I've experienced tremendously horrific visions of war, especially war, but also torture or rape. So before I ask you, I want to sketch one piece that happened to me because I would say 95% of the experience for me has been extremely pleasant. And then I don't know exactly on which day, day four or five, I became aware that all at the same time, unexpected, because the rest was super pleasant. I was having visions like in my worst nightmares, like all at the same time, like war, destruction, environmental degradation, uh, whatever nasty AI ro robots, like all at the same time. And my first, including my first physical reaction, you know, me meaning, you know, you, you, your nervous system gets stiff and stuff like that, because you literally see very awkward visions. It's also like a little bit in the documentary from, from, from Aubrey Marcus. And the way that I handled that, and again, I'm grateful that I had so much work done before, is that first there was a resistance in my system. I didn't want to see that shit or feel that shit, so to say. But once I was able to let go of the resistance and just accept this visions, nightmares, life in a helter-skelter way, although then it quickly just passed and my nervous system did take a moment to recalibrate and be at ease again but I was not constantly so to say tortured or caught up in a non-stop like negative loop again the short question to your side both from your experience as well as people that went through the darkness retreat as clients what happens and who will help you when things get difficult or are there also sometimes points because I know you allowed me to knock on when I was getting the the food served you know I was theoretically allowed to 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 
exchange communication twice a day. So what happens when things get really messy and difficult? Yes. Thank you for sharing that. That's actually really beautiful that you are just expressing more of what's really going on. And yeah, I I know from my personal experience and, and from also like leading people to the dark, that's what really happens underneath. Like, it's not that you know, you know, like the, the dark retreat can be very peaceful or nothing happens or it can be like a very challenging like you say 95 percent for you like i would actually say the percentage is much lower like like in a lot of times actually something can come up and you, you just never know and that looks very different every time and the way i'm handling that nowadays is very different like in the beginning and also when we look at the spiritual traditions especially when we look let's say at the advaita vedanta like self inquiry tradition or the sakchan tradition or we looking into the Dao, the Taoist tradition like there is not so much support like you would actually come from a background where you say all right you have done your practices alistair like you have already these experiences and you come here and we're just supporting you in your journey and you whatever is coming up is yours to deal with no projection allowed here is your safe container and see you on the other side you signed up for five days and good luck and i have definitely have come from that background like that's some of my like background that i have and also over the last 10 years i have learned from my own journey of like i have overdone it you know i went into the dark retreat for 10 days and i really tried to to push beyond that pain that came up so it's almost like oh i'm just a witness it's all fine it's it's not so bad it's okay i can handle it that's just part of it and it was pa so painful to actually not go into the emotion and really being able to hold myself there and i came out like yeah shaken and and hurt and and felt so defeated and and useless and seeing or having done that myself, like I have seen that in many other people as well, or simply where maybe the most important thing that you do in when you're in the dark is actually that you're saying like, I need to come out, this is too much, you know, that's the most healthiest, like insight that you can get that is like, or like I can give you an example, like I had, um, she's a good friend now, as so many clients turn into very close friends, just because we're sharing the same interests. And she had an experience where her shower was not working and the shower suddenly the water came running down and she was reaching out and we didn't hear it immediately so maybe that half an hour or hour that nobody was there even though she was knocking brought this deep childhood trauma up from not being seen or like being abandoned and so by the time i came there and spoke with her from the inside she was just in grief and she was, you know, like she felt like from all the practices she did that, that she needed to just push through that. And I actually was like, well, how about you coming out? But, or like I'm coming into you and we just spoke through it and it was very gentle with her and like asking her what she needs right now. And she was really afraid of even coming out because as you know, like once you're coming out, you see light again. So you're interrupting your melatonin cycle, which can create, you know, the more melatonin than serotonin than DMT. And there we have the expectations of going to a very special state rather than actually saying right now, this was too much and it was painful and I need to just be with myself and not push any further. So after having this conversation with each other, rather than me telling her what she needs, she was telling me actually what she needs by me just holding space. And then she was telling me that she wants to come out. And so she came out and I just gave her a big hug and I didn't say much and she could just cry. And she then, like reminding her that the dark retreat is not finished, that that's part of it. So she went into a room of ours and I went a few hours later back and actually guided her again into the dark retreat because she felt now ready again. And the whole emotions that went came up and she went through... She was almost, you know, was what would have been unthinkable to go back as like, this is a failure and this is the end, was actually just part of it. And she went inside again. And I can tell you many stories like that. And it looks every time different. Sometimes it's just a conversation. Sometimes I have to go inside and just be with the person and just acknowledge the emotion that they're having because it's too much for them. And then they're like, I want to come out it's too much. It's the end. 
and then maybe just two, three hours later and check on them. They're like, I'm absolutely fine. It was just an emotion and it was so intense. It's It just went through, it changed again. And that's the crazy thing. Like emotions feel in the moment that they will never leave us. They bring up a memory and that's, that's then our state we're in, trapped. And then a few hours later, we realize, wow, the, by acknowledging it and feeling it, it can change again because we're not trying to change it. So the acceptance and allowance of it it makes it actually that it can shift again. And that's a big part of the work of actually, that's why I'm speaking also about shadow work or the inner child of, of staying with what's present. And sometimes the person can do that for themselves, but a lot of times, and also in my own growth and, and you know, being able to hold my own pain and having more um, tools for that, I can support people better in their process where trauma can actually really come up and childhood memories and, and kind of allow them to rephrase what has been happening and feel that again and actually being able to re recognize that that was maybe just the inner critic, you know, where their school teacher has been telling them off or it was just their mother, you know, that that was like an alcoholic or it was a, a romantic partner that they were abused by or it was somebody being bullied. And that story plays out. But that's not what's happening right now in your actual life. It's your inner landscape that brings that up because it can heal and it can actually come from a place of where we are going in with love and embracing that in the first place because we're feeling safe and supported. And so we are creating just more support to deal with whatever is coming up. And that's, yeah, it's a lot to deal with, but it's also then it creates a lot of space and freedom and then support in the future, being able to do that with yourself when you're gone again. Since the demand for darkness retreats is bigger than the supply, albeit it being a small niche, and so many providers are moving into the market, you don't have to mention names <laughs> um, or places, but from your own experiences, um, what are some no-goes and uh, asked into the other direction, what should people make sure, you know, almost like check boxes that like either these are check boxes for no-goes, right? Like, okay, if, if, if this, you know, is not provided, don't go there or the, or the other way around, like what, what are absolute like musts, like, people that offer darkness retreats should be aware of? Yeah, that's a great question. And maybe you can also help me to answer that because you have been on the other end, you know, and like from your own experience, what you would have wished for. So I'm also curious about that. I mean, from my end, I would say, like I see also like I have more and more people like clients, but also people just reaching out that want to start dark retreats because they see the the healing qualities and the depth and they want to offer it and i i know and i mean i'm aware of the places that exist in the world because they're not so many a lot of people actually offer dark retreats and some centers that people that offer dark retreats have even never done a dark retreat themselves that's actually not an uncommon thing and or maybe just one and that's it And so for me, it's a little bit like you cannot offer something that you have not really experienced yourself in the first place. And that's a complete no-go for me. Also, there are places where you just go into a dark retreat, like in a dark chamber. And let's imagine like you have been opening up to, let's say in the dark retreat, you are so safe that you are literally becoming naked and very vulnerable and sensitive. And then you're coming out of the dark retreat and you're just going back into normal life. Let's say you're going back. <clears throat> I mean, we had that in the beginning. Like I have made that mandatory that you cannot do that anymore. Where you cannot, <clears throat> excuse me, like where you cannot come to the hermitage and just fly when you come out of the dark retreat back into the plane, into your home country. It's like no go. Like you, you come out and the integration period or like basically where you're still staying, you know, with your experience and you're digesting that is crucial for me because it's a little bit like how I compare it is like a fast. Like, yes, we fasting and we're not taking any food to us and we're becoming, I mean, in my case, when I fast, I have become very 
like agitated or angry even you know like that's that has become a normal part where it's becoming better and better but when i'm coming out of fasting my initial reaction has been well now i really want to give myself all the treats that i haven't had for the last days and you come out so fast of it that you actually you are not damaging the experience but you're actually learning how to do transition from that sensitive period into a life that you have done, had before and that you're familiar with and the same is like when you come out of the dark retreat it's like oh that was amazing i have this deep inner connection i feel so connected and i feel so happy and so much love to share there is like a part where you almost like i have hands and i have legs and i can just run and i know how to do that and i'm just doing that <laughs> and having fun and then you very re quickly realize that that was a bit too fast and so that it's really important that you're staying actually in an environment where you can still maintain that slowness and sensitivity. It's like what I call the like the dark retreat echoes or like the effects of the dark retreat. So rather than going into too much stimulation and interaction is actually staying with what you have just experienced. And that also is why every dark retreat that you're doing again as a as the second or a third one, you become better in that integration of harnessing what you actually have been going through. And so that's something to really watch out. And I also feel like the, yeah, like really see if you are, like for me, the most important is actually have a surround network, like a community or a friend, friends that like, that I can speak about it. So like I need support, but I also want to be alone. Like, where is that honored of like, yes, I can reach out. I can, you know, maybe I just want to cuddle. Maybe I just want to be seen and, 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 you know, being felt. And then I can be by myself again. And where do you have this space rather than into functioning again? Or let's say for a lot of people is they're coming out of the dark. It's like, so how was it? Give me the download or they have some, like, you need to tell something special and maybe that's not, you cannot even explain how it was because it was so much that it's too much to actually share that it's just an experience in it itself. That's just, it's actually just yours. So these are some of my points that I have to, to share about that. Usually I, I stop with another or I end with another question. This time I feel really more called to end this on a personal experience note i have the feeling it's the most authentic to end this conversation in between the two of us with almost like a summary i can start and then uh, i hand over to you so this is very personal so i'm very grateful that i did it so late in my life. I'm very grateful that I did it when I was not afraid of the experience beforehand. I'm very grateful that I did it at a point in my life where I'm actually really good and in peace with myself and I finally love myself, which took a long time to be very honest, at least for me, must not be true for or might not be true for, for other people. And for me, it was truly one of the most beautiful gifts of this precious lifetime. And also, especially because I come from a background of trauma therapy and did a hell lot of work, actually the gentleness, almost sweetness of my experience was really beautiful. And just a couple of sentences more for all those who are listening who have shared a lot of uh, psychedelic experiences I think it's worth to give it a try because I know in my daily meditation almost literally every day I can get so fully ecstatic and in bliss like it, i only meditate two times 20 minutes in the morning so 20 minutes then it is a gong and then again 20 minutes but i stay with my eyes closed and it's it's so joyful so juicy so sexy so rich so vibrant so it's it's really like 
and like entheogens, you know, like like you're producing yourself such a deep amount of peace and joy. It's incredible. And and that has really been just intensified in the darkness, but at the same time, a thing that I take out of the darkness into, into daily life. And maybe finally, especially for those, I would say especially for those who, for whatever karmical reason, which I don't even want to not respect, would, not, would never um, dare to or don't want to because of whatever religious belief, dogma, anxiety, would never take a substance such as ayahuasca or LSD or mushrooms or MDMA or whatever the type of substance is, especially to you, I would also say if you're curious, give it a shot because it might truly be a deeply transformative uh, experience. And I think with that, I, I close from my side and I don't mind how you want to end it, Severin, maybe, yeah, just handing over to you. I really like what you just shared. It's beautiful of how you ended that right now, just in your personal view and what you had to share and i i feel like just yeah you gave me a lot of space to share from my perspective and i really appreciated the time to talk with you and speak more about dark retreat is a big passion of mine yeah and i and i like the way you just you know emphasized for you how you liked that you did it more in a later phase in your life when you felt really at peace and good and also like respecting your own journey and and your fears and, and how from that point, like really emphasizing the gentleness and how it, how that really worked for you. And also, especially with your own background and with your backpack of trauma that you're bringing from your childhood and your rich psychedelic experiences that you have that, yeah, I, I can just see and knowing you personally, how deeply it, the dark retreat impacted you and also how much value you got out of it. And, and it makes me just really happy that we share that yeah passion about it so thank you thanks for the podcast severin